Hey everybody. So recently I published this video here about a laptop I got it for service because it came from the factory with Windows 11 Home with S mode. Yeah, that garbage. <laughs> it was basically a video of me trying to figure out how to get S mode turned off and get Windows 11 out of S mode without the need for a Microsoft account. I did finally figure it out. Um, it was a combination of using a registered trick, which I question if that was even necessary. But it was actually, um, what actually got it going was disabling Secure Boot on that computer. And once Secure Boot was turned off, and it had Windows 11 22H2, by the way, once it was turned off and it booted back up into Windows, I went to the settings and bam, uh, Windows 11 Home was finally just Windows 11 Home. But the thing is with this S mode, so Microsoft originally came out with Windows S mode in Windows 10 S. It was originally intended to be a stripped down version of Windows 10 that could only run programs and apps out of the App Store or the Windows Store or Microsoft Store. For example, you couldn't download Firefox and install. You couldn't download Google Chrome and install that. You couldn't run Command Prompt. You couldn't run RegEdit. You couldn't do any sort of administrative task with the thing. It was a very locked down environment to where all you could do is do very basic tasks like browse the web with Microsoft Edge. And I believe that's even a limited state. And you can only use apps that were in the web store or unless the Microsoft App Store so, most people who have a PC, not a Chromebook, but a personal computer, expect to be able to do more than just run stuff out of a uh, quote-unquote mobile app store. Now, granted, a lot of the apps in the app store are not mobile apps, but the whole design is really to be more like that of a smartphone. So to restrict your ability to run programs and stuff on the computer, it's just, it's crazy. So originally, Microsoft, when they come out with this uh, Windows 10 S or Windows 10 S mode, the idea was it would be shipped out on cheap end computers. Probably Microsoft offered HP and Dell and those OEMs a good deal on a Windows license for a Windows 10 S mode license instead of a regular Windows 10 Home license. Now, of course, this S mode, or sometimes I like to call <laughs> mode, <laughs> of course, it came along to Windows 11 as well. And this weekend was the first time I got to go hands-on with a computer that came with the uh, operating system known as Windows 11 Home in S mode. So originally, the idea was someone will buy this cheap computer from Walmart or wherever. And of course, in the specs for the computer, it would list in the operating system, Windows 10 Home in S mode or Windows 11 Home in S mode. And they would buy this computer, realize they'd get a home, they'd realize that they couldn't do hardly anything with it. Microsoft originally would offer you to get out of this locked environment for a convenience fee of $50, shall we say. They used to charge 50 bucks to get out of it. Then at some point they dropped the $50 fee. They're like, okay, you can just go ahead and just download this app from the Microsoft Store and you can get out of our crappy S mode and be able to use your Windows computer as a Windows computer. But there was a catch. As I've shown in the previous video, the Technically, the correct way to get out of S mode is to go to the store. And if you're not signed in with the Microsoft account, you have to sign in with the Microsoft account to get the switch out of S mode app to get out of S mode. And of course, as you can imagine, it really rubbed a lot of us the wrong way. Especially technicians, because the thing is the Microsoft account it kind of links the hardware, or it can, I can say it links the license of Windows with 
your Microsoft account. And let's say that I, uh, I get a computer for service like I just did. Not my computer, but to get out of S mode, it wants a Microsoft account. And this is what I think already think is ridiculous enough that they that they technically require a Microsoft account in Windows 11 just to just to use a computer that you bought or whatever. It's it's ridiculous. Um, it's Microsoft's way of trying to force Microsoft accounts down our throats. I mean, why else would they make it so blasted difficult to get out of S mode? I mean, think of it like this: that laptop. It was a Dell Instrument 15 3000 series. Just to just to get it going out of the box, it required an internet connection. That's because the workarounds normally bypass the dumb internet requirement for Windows 11 setup. Don't work in S mode. Well, that's because Windows S mode has command prompt disabled. So literally. If you did not have access to internet, let's say you're out in the sticks, you don't have access to internet. Let's say, let's I'm, I'm going to say the worst case scenario. Let's say you're you got an old phone that does not do mobile data tethering, where you can uh, more or less make a mobile hotspot. Let's say you have zilch, no access to internet. That computer is basically. A paperweight. I mean, because you can't even get to the desktop. You literally have to get it signed into the internet in order to complete setup. So that's what I did with this thing over at my neighbor's house. Signed it in to the internet, and then of course gave it the no at thank you.com treatment for the Microsoft account requirement. Set up with the local account, and it was at that point that it was soon after that point that I realized what I was dealing with in S mode Windows installation. And here's another thing about the Windows S mode that I learned this weekend. And I think it's I think it's probably important that y'all know too, is that the S mode apparently it's tied to the digital license for that copy of Windows. The what's bizarre is Let's say you had a copy, let's say you had a copy of Windows 11 Pro. You had that 25 character product key ready to go. Just in order to change a product key and let's say upgrade to Windows 11 Pro, you had to first get out of S mode. <laughs> and that's why I think S mode is something that's it's just the dumbest thing I can think of. I mean, it makes the Microsoft account itself look uh, not as ridiculous. I mean, Come on. I mean, with Windows 11, of course, you have the Microsoft Leak Class no System Requirements on Windows 11. So, unless your computer is less than two years old, it technically is um, e waste according to Microsoft. And of course, generally, you have to have that Microsoft account in order to set up and use Windows 11. But on top of that, if it's a cheaper end laptop, it has this Windows 11 in S mode <laughs> garbage. It's like, what is the deal? What is the deal? So, another thing while I was researching Windows 11 S mode this weekend was Microsoft claims, oh, there's no such thing as Windows 11 Pro in S mode. But lo and behold, I, I can almost guarantee you that if I dropped an install of Windows 11 Pro on that laptop, once it connected to the internet, it would have been Windows 11 Pro in S mode. There were reports of computers doing that. Let's say, let's say I had a cheap computer like that and I want to put Pro on it out of the box. Let's say I did a clean, let's say, for example, like I do with a lot of OEM computers, like laptops. There were times in the past where I would get a computer to set for someone. I like sometimes first thing out of the box, I wouldn't even boot it up. I would just pop in the Windows installation media and begin a clean install of Windows on the computer. So let's imagine, I mean, this new laptop that came with Windows 11 Home and S mode. If I installed Pro on that, or Home, once it got connected to the internet to do an activation, bam, it would have been Windows 11 Home or Pro in S mode. That was the case with this laptop. I 
did a clean installation of windows on the thing. And it acted like regular Windows 11 Home. It didn't have the restrictions of S mode. But once I connected to the internet, bam, it turned into this little restricted machine where you can only do basic stuff like browse the internet and Microsoft Edge and only use apps from the App Store. <laughs> so keep in mind, reinstalling does not work. Um, and there's a chance, I can't say for certain, I don't know exactly how the get out of S technically works, but there's the chance that, for example, if you get out of S mode one time and you go to reinstall, perhaps when you finish the clean install and activate, you might go back to S mode. I don't know for sure. Microsoft claims that when you download the app from the Microsoft Store using your Microsoft account, that is a one-time deal. Once you switch out of S mode, you can't go back. However, the odd thing is apparently if you did not go the official route of getting out of S, you could actually go back to S by reversing the registry hack that is noted in the previous video or by re-enabling Secure Boot. I mean, if I had a few more days to play with this laptop, um, I would definitely try these things, but I had to finish the laptop up in kind of a hurry and get it back to its owner. So it's not with me anymore, unfortunately. But I might be able to set up a Windows 11 installation environment to where I can manually toggle on S mode and do some experiments with it. I don't know for sure, but yeah, this Windows 11 S, this Windows 11, Windows 10 in S mode. Microsoft, just get rid of it for goodness sakes. It's ridiculous. You say it for it say you say it's for security or simplicity. Maybe for some of the people who are working at Microsoft who are in, let's say, the Microsoft environment where it's anti-Google, anti-Apple, everything Microsoft, Microsoft Edge for your browser, Microsoft Office for your Office productivity, you know, Windows for your OS, forget Linux. <coughs> Excuse me, guys, I had to sneeze for a moment. I guess I'm allergic to the uh, Windows S mode. But yeah, so when, um, I guess, when you're so, I guess for someone who is so into just Microsoft stuff, maybe it could be more simple. I don't know. And yeah, I, I will give it one point. I guess I can say that when it's so locked down like that, um, yeah, it's secure, but there's not much you can do with the computer. You're taking a computer and you're basically limiting its, you're basically limiting its capabilities. I mean, that laptop, I did actually um, open it up. I pulled the SSD out, the M.2 NVMe SSD, pulled it out and wiped it and did a uh, drop on install because I was having issues clean installing when it's on the laptop um, regularly. But inside the laptop, it was actually pretty decently built. I mean, the laptop had uh, 8 gigs of memory, Core i5 CPU, had the M.2 NVMe drive and you could expand it to a full size 2280. It had a spot ready to go for a two and a half inch SATA drive. So, I mean, and also not to, not to mention, it also had a touchscreen on it. So it wasn't like it was some low end piece of garbage, like the HP that I looked at not too long ago. It was actually relatively decent. Um, the, so for this, S mode to be on there and limit what you can do with the freaking thing. It's just, it, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. <laughs> it really just, I'll never understand it. So in my personal opinion, now that Microsoft is technically offering the S mode switch out for free, well, of course the thing is they want you to use your Microsoft account to switch out of it. But other than that, What's the whole purpose of S mode? If it's really for security and simplicity, why not make it an option that you can switch into or out of? And not make it so dang difficult to get out of unless you go the uh, Microsoft account route. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. So anyways, kind of a little rant here, but that's when I think about this whole Windows S mode or Windows mode.
Anyways, hope y'all enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video from Cuckoo Channel. If this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to tick the bell so we can know if I new video post. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. And share this video as well as the channel with your friends and get the word out. Also, I have a second channel that's Cube Comp MTDX. Over there, you'll find videos about thunderstorms and weather, cycling, and videos about me personally. Feel free to subscribe over there as well if you like. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for your support.